Who are you becoming? So when you're a kid, you've got all these hopes, dreams, aspirations, things you want to do in the world. And then all of a sudden, you get smacked with reality, what people consider reality, mostly adults telling you what you can and can't do. So how do you become who you want to be? How do you even know who you want to be? Are you shaped by society, shaped by what people say you're supposed to be, who you're supposed to be, how you're supposed to act based on what you look like, whatever. So that's the topic I want to talk about in this video. How do you become who you admire? Becoming who you admire in different areas of your life, right? So you've got different areas of your life. You've got yourself. You've got, if you're in a relationship, you got your family, you've got, you know, your, your kids, your wife, your husband, you know, you've got your, that, 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 that area around you, that family. Then you've got beyond that, you've got any groups you belong to, your coworkers, you know, your, your, your team, your city, all that's a group. You've got, you've got also like humanity. So. Are you becoming who you admire in different areas of your life? So I was born in Liberia, West Africa. My dad, growing up, my dad was somebody I admired greatly, not just because he was my dad, but because I found him to be a very inspirational person, human being. This was somebody who was fighting for multi-party democracy in our country. He got thrown in jail as a political prisoner and everything. Well, my, my father was, a, was the most disciplined person that I knew. I grew up in a war zone. Even during the war, my father was still, his daily disciplines, he kept those in, even during the war. So understand, I admire my father greatly, but there were also areas in his life that I didn't admire. So I started to look at, how do I become who I wanna be? What is that? What does that even look like? Could I even become that? And one of the things I did was I, I wrote down, I started to write down, what did, if I were to become my best version of myself in different areas, what would that look like? What would that look like physically? What would that look like? How would that man behave in his relationship with his family? What kind of money would that man make? What type of ethics, morals would that kind of guy have? Those are the things I started thinking about. I started writing all those different things down. So then I'm like, okay, so then how do I craft this person? How do I become who I admire? And I started to look first at myself, okay? Am I the kind of person that would admire myself? Do I admire myself? How can I, how can I even show love to other people if I can't even love myself? And then, and then like look around, think about it for a second. Like all the people that you admire, what, what, what traits do they have? What traits do they have? Like physically, like when you look around, if you're a man and you look around at other men, like what traits, what physical traits do they have? Are they overweight? Do, do they like get out of breath if they run up the stairs? Or do you see them as physically strong, tough, masculine? What do you admire? You will start to emulate what you admire. That's what people talk about your, your network is your net worth and get around successful people because you start to see things that you admire and like, okay, I, I admire that person's demeanor. I admire the fact that they drive that type of car to live in this place, to travel this way, to take care of the family this way. You start, when you start to admire certain things, you start to give it power. That, that means you have that ability in yourself. Whatever you're attracted to in somebody else, it means it indicates to you. That means that same thing is also in you. That's why you want it. That's why you're attracted to it. But sometimes society can tell you to suppress yourself or suppress your desires a suppressed communicating that you want those things. So one of the things I started to look at that I admired was physicality. I grew up very like, very slim, very, they used to call it dry <laughs> in Liberia, like skinny, very skinny. And I played soccer, so I ran all the time and all that, I had very high endurance, but I was very skinny. And so I'm like, okay, I, I, I like people who are, who are built well, muscular, right? But I didn't really know even how to get about doing that? How do I even produce that? How do I even become that? So then I first had to learn, how do you do it? Get trained on it, then actually put in effort, put in the work. Same thing with relationships. When I grew up, I grew up in West Africa. I never knew any man 
my father included, I never knew any man who was faithful to his wife. I grew up and I never knew any man who was faithful to his wife growing up. Not my uncles, not my father, not whoever. No, I never knew one single man. Let me think about this for a second. Very few people ever grown up and they didn't know once, like I knew for sure none of them were faithful to their wives. You understand? Like zero. <laughs> so when you, when you grew up in that environment, I'm like, dude, wh what has been going on? Like why? I didn't even know why. And I asked my older brother, I'm like, Jerry, because at the time my brother had like six girlfriends. I was like 10 years old. And Jerry was, I don't know, 16 years old or so, 17 or something like that. And he had six girlfriends in rotation. I'm like, Jerry. And it was like, they were like encouraging me to have girlfriends and multiple girlfriends. And I'm like, why, why do you, why do we want to have multiple girlfriends? I didn't fucking understand it. And he's like, so we could sleep with them. I'm like, but, but why, why do we want to just sleep with all these girls? <laughs> and I'm, this is the, this is the information I'm getting at nine, 10 years old. Okay. And, and here's what Jerry said. And I, this is what Jerry told me, my older brother, Jerry, he, he said, because when you sleep with them, it's like the best five seconds of your life. <laughs> That is because it's like the best five seconds of your life. And I'm like, so you go through all this trouble for five seconds? <laughs> what the, that shit didn't make any sense to me. But that was the data I was getting. That's the information I was getting. Okay, so then I looked around, I'm like, okay, so there's gotta be different things. You gotta look at becoming who you admire. How does that person act? How do they handle things? What's the morality level? Do they take the easy way? Do they do, they do the hard stuff? Right? Did they do things easy? Did they slack off? Or are they tough? Are they mentally tough? Are they physically tough? Those are all the traits I would write down. Mentally tough. How do you prove you're mentally tough? If you've never been through adversity, which most people have gone through some level of adversity. If you've never gone through some level of adversity and made it out to the other side, how do you know you're mentally tough? If you've never encountered tough situations, dude, I've been tested in different areas of my life since I was born. I, when I was five years old, a war breaks out in my country. I saw my first dead body, casualty of war, killed. Saw, saw that at five years old, okay? So it's like then my entire childhood was, I lived in a war zone. So I say that because throughout that time, we were tested, tested with like facing death, where there's an AK-47 pointed in your face as a child and you think you are going to die. That's the environment I grew up in as a kid. Okay. So adversity, adversity in relationships, got my heart broken. Most people have gotten their heart broken on some level. I was engaged, before I married my wife, Chelsea, I was engaged before. On the wedding day, on the day we're supposed to get married, the person I was engaged to does not show up. Dude, that was fucking adversity. That was tough to deal with. But I still have to figure out, okay, how do you get tested and how do you bounce back? You look at the things you've experienced in life and you're like, okay, I've had this adversity, I've overcome that. I faced this challenge, I overcame that. I handled this thing, I overcame that. I've been tested. That's how I know I'm mentally tough. And I will continue to test myself and continue to test myself and continue to test myself because I don't want an easy life. I want to be tested so that, so that if I'm tough, life will be easy. I don't just want things to be easy for me. Because if things are so easy for you, how will you behave when shit gets hard? You don't even know how you behave if you've never encountered those things before. So you gotta, you gotta look at becoming who you admire in these different areas. And then on your finances, who do you admire on the subject of finances? How does the person you admire make financial decisions? Did they make a lot of money or did they make a little bit of money? Did they complain about the amount of money they make or do, are, are they resourceful to go and create more avenues to make more money? Do they complain that the minimum wage isn't this much so they can't make this much money? Are they a victim? I mean, think about who you admire. Do you admire people who are victims? Who blame everyone else for their problems? Or do you admire the people who go, hey, you know what? I've encountered this situation that was shitty. I encountered this other bad situation. I encountered these other things. Yet, I still survive and I still thrive. 
Tupac had a saying, the, the rose that grew from concrete. Almost impossible for that sort of thing to happen. Rose growing out of concrete, right? It couldn't be stifled by the concrete, still found a way to rise. That's what I'm talking about. In all areas, in the areas of your finances, in your relationships, in yourself, your physical self, your disciplines that you have, our son just became 18 years old. He is more disciplined than most adults. He has more money saved than most adults. He probably works harder than most adults. He works and he goes to school and he works out and he eats clean, extremely disciplined. So what is his result? If you look at his results compared to most adults, his results is head and shoulders above most people. His physicality, because he put time in at the gym. His discipline on how he eats. You, you, you know that he, it's his birthday yesterday. We bought, bird, Chelsea bought a birthday cake for him. A kind of small birthday cake. He's like, I'm not gonna eat the damn cake. So the cake is still sitting in the refrigerator. None of us ate the damn cake, okay? He's like, maybe next week I'll have a bite of the cake. Okay, none of us ate the cake. For my birthday, he made me protein brownies. Right, so you got brownies with protein in there. Why am I telling you that? Because there are things he figured out that he admires and he chose to become those things. So you have to do that in your own life. Look at what do you admire, that's your ideal. And if you look at your financial position, if you don't like your financial position, and you don't look at yourself and be like, dude, I admire the shit out of my financial position. I admire the shit out of my balance sheet. I admire the hell out of my, my, my gross income. If you don't admire that shit, then something is wrong that has to be corrected. Then how do you become the person who you can admire? What traits does that person embody? Like the person who has a strong balance sheet, what traits do they embody? They look at how much money they're making. They look at how much value they're delivering to the public. They look at how well they're marketing their products and services, right? They look at all of these different things. Do you do that? And if you don't, that's your ideal to strive for. So you got your ideals, your ideal person over here that you're trying to create and become. You got you over here on where you are today, your present self. And so you, if you start writing these things down, how does my ideal person behave on the subject of finances? Do they know where they're staying financially? Do they know their burn rate? How much, how much money to burn through? Do they know how much debt they have? Are they, are they investing? Are they continuing to increase their financial IQ? Or did you just browse around on social media all day, watching short little videos, but never actually implementing things? Do the person you admire, is that how they will behave? Look at all of those things and based on how that person you, you admire, how they will behave, you start to embody that. I used to be somebody who slept, to, I, I would not go to sleep till like two, three in the morning. I would just stay up all night, I've always been that way. Then I decided I would start waking up early so no matter what time I go to sleep, I wake up at 4.40 a.m. I'm gonna start taking that down. Eventually I'm gonna to get to 3.40 a.m. Why? Because it's hard to do. It's hard to wake up at 4.40 in the morning and go to the gym. Because I'm not trying to do the easy thing. The man I admire is somebody who wakes up and does the hard shit to get the result he wants. That's the man I admire, so that's the man I'm building continually. So how do I build that? I build that by doing it every day. You are what you habitually do. So I, if I do that as a habit every day, that's what I'll become. So I'm becoming what I habitually do. So that's, that's my whole goal and message for you today is write down who you admire, what traits you admire. It doesn't have to be a specific person. Just write down what you admire and then start becoming that person in different areas in your family, in your finances, especially in your fitness. And then you will embody that and then other people will look at you and like, damn, man, I admire what you've done. I admire what you built. I admire what you're doing. Be that example for other people. Thanks for watching.